Hey there, good to see you. This video is part of the course that is published on my school community. You can find the link down below. Let's get to it. So to give a short introduction about Kubernetes and, and what it is and why we need it is actually quite a challenging task. Also because people make it out to be something really complex and, and really hard to learn. And in some ways it is, but you have, the trick is to scope it down to what you need to perform your job. Like it is an endless rabbit hole and I learn stuff every day. But the reality is that if you have a certain understanding of what, what Kubernetes is and what it does, you can already go very far in, in, in performing your daily work as a DevOps a Kubernetes platform engineer. So in this course, we are starting with the fundamentals. So I'm not going to explain you all the ins and outs of Kubernetes. I'm just going to start with telling you a story. And maybe this will help you to see why the the need for Kubernetes was, uh, was born. So I used to work for a place. Let me move it a little bit over here. Um, where this is a few years ago, which was actually quite a, it was a nice place to work. And before they used to run all these virtual machines, all these virtual machines. VM. We had these VMs. And very often, each virtual machine contained maybe one application, one or two. There were a few binaries running on there, but that was it. And these virtual machines, well, they, they were doing their thing. And then in 2013, with the rise of Docker, containerization came around. Like containerization has its roots in the 1970s when the I believe it's the Cheroot when that was uh, introduced into the Unix uh, system. That's already the first beginnings of separating out things from the operating system. But it is much older, but containerization really became popularized in 2013 when Docker came along. And then people started containerizing applications. And, and that is great, right? Because when you containerize an application, well, then you don't need a, an entire operating system for, a v, for an application. You can have multiple containers on your virtual machine, right? So this is what we were doing then. So, okay, let me just zoom in here a bit and then we're going to enlarge this one. So we had these big VMs and our, contain, our, our application was containerized. So let's call this um, Docker container. We had these big VMs, and in these VMs we had Docker containers, and we had multiple of them. And that was great, because now we didn't need to... Um, manage all we, we needed to manage less VMs there were less VMs to upgrade because each VM has its own operating system right each VM has uh, Ubuntu running on it and then we only needed to um, here maybe this rhyme say that we were running Ubuntu on here Ubuntu so the way it works is that the, the VM is running an operating system and all of the containers, they use the operating system. They use the CPU, the, the memory of the virtual machine, right? They are all sharing this pool of compute on the machine. And this way, the com containers can be very lightweight. The containers are compartmentalized and the containers are... Uh, uh, scalable but okay so we have an application running in a container 
But what if we want to have multiple of those, right? Or what if we want to have multiple replicas of our application? Because say we are serving a front end, uh, a web server, and that's talking to a database. Well, at some point, a container can hold, handle only so many requests, so we need more. So what did we do? We had multiple of these VMs. Oops. And we had this really elaborate setup of multiple VMs running Docker containers. And this was all provisioned with Ansible. So it was a push-based um, setup. So every day we were pushing YAML playbooks. And in the playbook, it said, OK, install Docker and then install uh, this and that. And then you must run this container image uh, with so many resources. So application one would run here, 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 and here. The problem is that this container is not aware that this container is running there, for example. So how are we going to route the traffic to them? Well, we had this big load balancer, or technically we had several load balancers, and this was a uh, HA proxy. Oops, does it work? Here, a proxy load balancer. We had this big HA proxy load balancer, and then the load balancer would get the request from the outside, from uh, some some person needing to visit our application. He would uh, make a request to the load balancer, and then the load balancer would say, usually in a round robin fashion. You know, in this setup, it wasn't that intelligent. It, it is possible. But it would say, okay, there is a container here. And then um, uh, the virtual machine would say, like, you would get a request from, I, I need to reach this application on this virtual machine. And then the virtual machine would say, okay, that's this container. Okay, so that worked. And then the next client comes, and then in a round robin fashion, the HA proxy would route it to this VM, and then it would maybe route it to this container here. So in that sense, we were able to route the traffic from the user to different containers. And in a way, this was scalable. But we were still saying, okay, we must have X VMs and they must run X container. And when when we were upgrading, we had to do all of this by ourselves. So we had to turn off this VM, and then we knew that we had three replicas running on the other VMs. And it was just a lot of manual work. It was a lot of... Um, a very complex system was needed. And this Docker container was not aware that it was running here. And this is where Kubernetes comes in. So Kubernetes is a system to solve this problem of having so many VMs and so many containers running everywhere. Kubernetes is the, the operating system of the cloud. So let me write that down. Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes is the operating system of the cloud. And basically, what Kubernetes is, is a way, a, a bunch of, Kubernetes is a bunch of virtual machines who are able to, are able to communicate properly with each other and to divide their workload. That is basically what Kubernetes is. So Kubernetes, instead of a HA proxy load balancer and, 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 and like separate from network, separate, like if we're not thinking about network now, what Kubernetes does is say, is, let me go back. Um, 
Let's copy this over. So Kubernetes underwater still is a bunch of virtual machines like this. It is still running Ubuntu or other types of Linux. It is still virtual machines. It's not it's not nothing different. But the difference is is that you have a control plane. Control plane. And all of these are now called worker nodes. Worker node. Well, let me just write that worker node. So white is now Kubernetes. And without going into too much detail, what I can do is I can go here and I say, hey, Kubernetes, I want three replicas of this image. Um, let's say uh, LinkedIn. This is a, a bookmark manager. LinkedIn. So this is what, what you do in a deployment. And then what Kubernetes is going to do it's going to say, you, you, are you are defining this in a YAML file, usually. So uh, you would have a, a YAML file. Let's see. You would have a YAML file. YAML file. And we are going to get into all of these details as we go along. But we, we write a YAML file. We say, hey, Kubernetes, I want three replicas of this image, LinkedIn. Okay, and then the control plane takes that request. Yeah, let's turn that into arrows. And the control plane takes that request and it says, all right, I have all of these nodes here. And where is this um, uh, most suitable? So where do I have enough capacity for this? So it will, it will, I, like, I don't have to rely on a HA proxy load balancer anymore. No, Kubernetes is going to see. Okay, this node is pretty full. Maybe this one is a bit better for now. So it is going to schedule one. Of them over here and then next he says okay this one still has some room so number two is also going to go here but then now this is full and this one has more capacity so maybe i should have it here like i, I I'm, I'm explaining this very simplistically but i'm just trying to get the concept over to you right so instead of going here and and with ansible saying you must run one replica or one docker container here on virtual machines who are not able to intelligently talk to each other here we have this beautiful system where the operator can say hey run this and then kubernetes the control plane is going to figure it out for you and that's the beauty of kubernetes it fi you tell it a certain state, and Kubernetes figures it out. And this is a simplistic uh, image, right? This is a simplistic application. So we have three worker nodes. But the real power of this is when you have an application that needs, uh, that needs to run in, say, a few hundred Docker containers. Well, are you going in your in the old way? Are you going to write all the, the the YAML code and provision all these virtual machines, and then uh, are you going to um, sort of imperatively say you must do this? No, you want a a system that does that for you. So if I say here, hey Kubernetes, I want one hundred replicas of this image. then Kubernetes is going to say, well, okay, well, I'm able to run four of these on one node. I'm just making this up. 
but I can run four of these on one node. You want 100, I'm going to need to scale up my nodes. So if you're running this in the cloud, like say in Azure, in Azure Kubernetes service, then systems are in place to say, take this request of 100 replicas, calculate how many nodes it will need, and then it will add the nodes for you. It's just going to add those nodes. Oops. It's going to add those nodes and it's going to, this is not working as I intended, I'm sorry. Let's see, add, add a node here and here and here and here and here and here. And now I have enough, um, now I have enough capacity to run your 100 replicas, right? So all I need to do is when I have configured my system properly, tell Kubernetes that, okay, this is what I want, go and figure it out. And then we have 100 replicas of this image running. But say, another thing of the beauty of this is that when you do it in a desired state configuration like this, you're telling Kubernetes, give me this, then when a container fails, Kubernetes will register. So you're saying, I want three replicas and one goes down. Well, Kubernetes says, okay, my instruction is to have three. I'm going to remove the old container and spin up a new one because my boss wants to have three containers running at all time. And can you see how powerful this go is going to get when you have 100 replicas of something? Not all applications are are a hundred percent stable, right? Sometimes containers crash. You ideally you want to avoid this, but uh, sometimes they crash. Well, Kubernetes is going to handle that for you. You don't have to do anything for that. And when you when there is a problem, there are systems in place that will send you an alert, like okay, shit, something is wrong. You have to take a look at this, right? So Kubernetes is an intelligent way of running container workloads at scale. That is the, the, the most concise definition that I can give to you. And um, the power is in the fact that it will take instructions, like I've say, seen here, and translate that to actual running workloads. It will scale out the cluster for you in the cloud, but say you can also do things like, well, my say I'm running a newspaper, right? I have a newspaper website. Well, people very often read the newspaper in the morning, say at eight, till 10 a.m., that's when my traffic is highest. So say I have a user base, uh, I, have, I have a little graph here, and we have our time, so this is uh, 24 hours, here, 24 hours, and then here we have users. Well, at, n at 9 in the morning, 9 to 9, at, at 9 in the morning, my usage is going to be highest. Then it's going to go a bit lower. Then during lunch, it's going to get up a little bit because then people have time to read the news. Then in the afternoons, people are working. And then in the evening, it might get a bit more. And then whoop, then we have nothing. And for the rest of the night, we have nothing. And then it goes up to the morning again. So our application might not need to be running at full capacity every day. Maybe several days in the week have uh, more traffic than usual. Well, Kubernetes can take those requirements or uh, based on the load that is requested and intelligently scale your cluster up and down. So at 
at midnight, well, I don't need all these extra nodes because nobody's reading a newspaper at midnight, right? We only need a couple of them to be to handling the, the night shift workers and to make sure that everything keeps running. But I don't need a huge cluster for that. But then we can either say, well, we know that 9 a.m., that's probably going to be pretty busy. So at 8 a.m., start scaling out the cluster. It does take a little bit of time to provision each node, right? So we're going to scale out the cluster. And then we are able to handle the requests. But then maybe a... Uh, and then later, later during the day, the nodes are deleted again. But maybe there is some time we uh, publish a very, very popular article and suddenly we have millions of users all of a sudden coming to our website and we don't expect it. Well, we have a system in place. For example, we can have a system in place that the application should scale based on the CPU usage. So if my container or if, if my nodes or... No, based on on CPU usage, on on hand number of requests, you can you can scale your application based on certain metrics that are generated. So let's say we do it on based on requests. Well, Kubernetes might register. Okay, suddenly I have like millions of requests coming to my um, to my ingress controller, and I verify that these are uh, actual human beings. Well, I will need to scale up my application. So. Kubernetes is going to scale up the nodes, it's going to scale up the containers, and your users have a good experience when they're using the app. And this is all made possible by Kubernetes because it's an intelligent system that can take these kinds of instructions and then translate that to compute. It's a way of, of running compute, like distributing compute over a bunch of virtual machines who are able to talk to each other intelligently and that is um, able to yeah it is able to enable you to run containerized workloads at a large scale with relative ease so that is why we need kubernetes and what the use case is for it and i have gone through um, how the structure is of a cluster. So here we have the, um, the basic structure of a Kubernetes cluster is the control plane that is like the brain of the cluster that handles all of the, the requests. And then from the control plane, we have the worker nodes and all of the worker nodes are actually running the applications. And for now, that is actually all of the theory that we're going to need and now we can start uh, getting some hands-on experience on our first Kubernetes cluster. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like my style and you want to see more of my teachings, check out the school community in the link down below.